Okay, what's the target area? Let's um, go here first. Kingside Castling, let's go for these weak areas here. So as we mentioned from the previous video, when the king's all alone, when the castle, it doesn't mean the king is safe just because you've castled. This is looking now more at advanced level thinking. You have to still protect the area around the king. And that's a key element to developing your chess play if you're wanting to improve. So we'll see in this game. So they've castled, so that's um, good. So have a look at the area around the king. Are they protecting the king or are these, po these, these areas here weak? They are weak if they suddenly start moving their pieces away from their king area. Going to castle and they're not trying to control. You don't have to be in front of your king, you know, jamming your king in because that's even worse because you can get smothered mated quite easily. But it's maintaining a presence around your king and attempting to block off any threats or attacks around your king area. So this Fianchetto type stuff is really, to me, it's quite slow. I mean, they want to come here to get the diagonal coming through on this side here. It's more of a longer game thinking thing and I'm not looking to play a longer game here. I'm actually going to attack his queen. Not in the sense of I can't play a longer game, more of the case of I want to end the game with the end game opening. Whereas this psychology where you're doing the Fianchetto or the bishops type stuff, it's like saying, well, let's play a longer game. I'm going to take my time and I'm just going to chill. I'm looking at ending the game. So if I'm in that end game mentality of I want to end the game by attacking these areas here and our opponent is slow out of the gate, look at where this knight has gone. Look at where the king is. He's got two pieces already on the other side of the board. So they'll lose tempo trying to come back around again to protect the king area which are these two crucial crucial pots that we've got here at the minute. That's the way that I'm thinking anyway. So I'm going to push on to his bishop, a smaller piece attacking a higher piece, giving them something to think about. So he's probably bring himself back here, but then he's blocking this pawn and blocking the bishop. The bishop can come here, but then this center pawn is blocked. So he might not want to do that and he may decide to come here. But it's giving them something to think about while we get our pieces ready and prepared to start potentially doing some damage towards these two weak areas here. And once the rook comes out, then the king is definitely home alone. And that's the ideal position for what we want to do as we advance through the development. It's actually gone all the way back to block the pawn. So maybe they're looking to do a targeting thing to our king area here. That would be quite interesting, and that would um, I want them to sh I want them to do it. I want them to put the pressure on our king area. Um, I don't want their pieces over the other side of the board for this demonstration. But if it happens that they end up away from their king, then it it, it basically solidif solidifies what I'm saying. Bishop can attack their queen, they drop the pawn, opens up the, the space around their king a little bit, so weakens this area. So while they do that, we can bring our bishop down here, looking to protect our king area. So a smaller piece attacking the higher piece, inevitably the pawn drops, so we bring the bishop here to bring it here. So it's not about having them in front of your king, but you, have, you want to bet them, have them in a nice position. So if I do end up with my pieces in front of my king, it's because I have the strategy of obliterating these here. I'm not just leaving them there for the fun of it. Let's bring it here, as we said. So now he's opened up space around his king on the dark squares and he's challenging us now. So we can bring the bishop here. It's making more space now. So weakened his king area. We haven't asked him to do that, but the opponent is feeling threatened and is using Oh, the queen has gone to the deadly, deadly square. Deadly square for us, the square that we want. So he's weakened his queen by actually putting it in this position. So, 
this is really interesting we can go and attack the knight knight comes out he's going to eventually come around all the way around the back so smaller piece attacking a higher piece while we're thinking nice space here poor bishop it's not really got any play but this pawn is going to go because the queen has got his eye on it so we have to be mindful of that situation as well might be one of those where we allow the queen to come here because it's away from his king on the other side of the board got to think about those types of strategies as well if this knight took this pawn the pawn takes yeah so the queen does actually take the pawn so we'll take the knight they must have forgotten that their knight was under threat unless of course they've got something major and the queen takes so the queen is on the other side of the board totally away from their king their king is home alone I'm going to give it a little touch with the queen because the king is all alone like i say we wanted the opponent to show us the defense around their king you know but what they've done is opened up these weak areas to allow us to attack these weak areas so he's pinned his rook to the king is there something that we can do now what i had fashions of taking this pawn i mean the pawn can take which is fine but i want to get this bishop here to attack their rook and that seems like a doable situation because the queen's not going to come here because it'll get taken for free so i'm actually going to take the pawn to to get my bishop here attacking the rook because he's put himself in a pin the knight is also attacking the rook so the pawn is obviously going to take so i think it's an appropriate sacrifice unless of course i'm missing something because he could he could attack and do something like in the other games where i've not calculated so he has gone so we'll go with the bishop here attacking the, the rook because his pieces are on the other side of the board they're not really as deadly as the opponent would like them to be like we say the queen could come here and they've actually resigned okay so have a look at well don't need to have a look at the analysis just basically reiterate again the idea about castling really is about making sure that your king is safe the castle itself is not safe the pieces that you have help to make it safer have a look at the position on this board he's got all his pieces on the other side of the board he's got one piece that is protecting the king but it's pinned by by, by a major piece and then it's it's going to get taken off the board so it's not protected the opponent opened up his king's side pawns and let the let the beast in which was the queen so castling does not keep your king safe your pieces keep your king safe